I'd love to model this hatchet. I'd love to model all this stuff. But let's start with this hatchet. It'll be fun. Real fun. Okay. For this size, I'm gonna, because it's each one of these textures will be cropped smaller, so I'm gonna download it at um, the original. Okay, so like before, we're going to um, drag in this texture, this photo, into SketchUp from Windows Explorer. So, right click, explode the image, go to materials, apply the default material to the bottom face, turn on x-ray mode, and for this, I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees, and then rotate it 90 degrees, and this direction. Type in 90, enter. Turn off shadows. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to center it in both directions. So center it that way, and then center it. I'm going to center it with where you would put your hand to hold it. Now, in reality, you'd hold it more like right there. So. If you were in a virtual world and you're going to place this in someone's hand using this origin point, this is probably a good spot for it to start at. But I didn't scale it yet, so I need to do the scale trick. Select it, right click, make group. And I'm going to take a guess at how long this is. That's probably four inches. But this this whole thing is probably twelve and a half inches. I'm gonna I'm gonna take a guess at that. So make this into a group. Double click on the group. You see the dotted line. That's how you know you're inside the group. Go to the tape measure tool. Click on one corner, click on the other corner, and it says it is 233.72 foot squared. So, or that's the area. Distance is 24 foot 6 inches. It's definitely too big. So, click both ends and type in 12.5 enter. Do you want to rescale or resize? Yes. So now I told it to make this 12 and a half inches long. So that's what it did. So now that I have the proper scale, so if I check the scale, is it 12 and a half inches? Yes, one foot, half, one half inch down here in the corner. Right click and explode, and I can start the modeling process. So, what I'm going to do is uh, duplicate a copy of this to make sure the texture is, stays intact. So I'll use the move tool, hold down control, move a copy. And I can uh, turn off the modeling axis in the styles window. Okay, so I'm going to select this, right click make group. Now I'll double click on it. 
I'm inside the group and I'm gonna go to view, component edit, hide rest of model. Then my next step will be to trace all of this. So I see this as three objects, the wood handle, the shiny metal, and then this dull metal right here. So I'll have to trace around the outside of all of them. And I'll, I'll do that using arcs. Default sides are 12. Probably good for this first one, this first arc. Oh, I forgot. If you can see that when I try to, to do this, it's snapping to different angles and different lengths. That's because this is a small object. It's not super small, but it's kind of small. Um, so I'm going to scale it up by a factor of 10 so it's easier to model. So start scaling it, type in 10, enter. Okay, now we can get back to modeling our 10 foot tall hatchet, which we'll make it one foot tall later. One foot, one half inch. Okay. We will duplicate this to preserve the texture. click and start tracing it. Now this this will be easier to model because it's bigger and it won't snap. The snap won't be as erratic. It's, it's such a rustic old hatchet. It's not, you know, it's been sharpened a few times. So I'm, I'm just gonna go freehand with this one, with the pencil tool. I want to do it a little more justice. Let's see how I can do it here. I think I want to artificially make this sharp, just to give it a little bit more of a threatening look. So I'm going to model this as a separate object from the, the two different types of metals.
track there. Let me... Okay, so I traced around the outside of that shiny metal piece. Now I'll trace the edges of this dull metal. Okay. around the outside of this wood piece, the wood handle. Okay, so now that all three pieces are traced, I'll use the eraser tool to erase the extra edges. Okay, let me save this. Okay, so I'm gonna separate out all three of these pieces by duplicating each face. 
so I can model them one piece at a time. So I got that separated. Um, select on this face, right click, uh, double click, right click, make group, hit delete. I'll move this out. Delete this. Now, to make this notch, I'm going to uh, cut it out later, because to make model the shape, I want it to be a little bit easier, so I'm going to make a copy of this shape, and then for right now, at least, I'm just going to close this up. Make it easier to model. And this will just be a very simple extrusion. Turn off X-ray. Give it a default material. Use a push-pull tool. You actually won't see this edge. You you only see this inside part in the final model. So I'm gonna delete all these outside, these unnecessary faces and edges. Okay, that model is done. I'm gonna reapply the texture to it. Select it all, right click, make group. Okay, that's done. Next, we will make this. This shape here. So first off, I'm just gonna give it a regular generic texture just focus on the modeling of the shape of it. So we'll start off by using the push-pull tool. Give it its outer dimensions, which will be probably about like that. Depends on how heavy of a hatchet it is. So we want to start connecting the top lines with the bottom lines. What I'm going to do is I'm only going to model half of it. So um, I'm going to make this half as big. I really want it to be. Delete this interface there. That's an extra one. It's unnecessary. Okay. Then I'll just keep connecting these lines together. This one down there. Oops. So I can rotate 
this face. Just snap it to here. Rotate it in a little bit. And then in this middle section, I want to give it a little bit of a waviness. So I'll connect these lines together. give it a little bit more interest than just a straight wedge shape only. So I'll select this edge and rotate, do the same thing, I'll rotate this face in give it that blade edge make it a little thinner and then play with this a little bit so this one I'm gonna rotate in in a little bit. There. I think I like that. So I need to smooth out some of these edges on the inside. So pull down control with the eraser tool to smooth these edges. Do the same thing for these edges up here. The only one I don't want to smooth is that one in the corner to give it a nice crisp edge. Since I can't see that line because I smoothed it, I can do a trick. I can do view hidden geometry. So I can keep modeling. And I'm going to pull this down a little bit to give that a little bit more sharpness of an edge. I think I like that. Okay. So now I have to duplicate this and mirror this to the, to the other side. Save it. I'll make a copy of it, scale it in this direction, negative one, enter. And let's see if this will merge together. Sometimes it does, sometimes it's a little bit testy with me. See how that that just deleted that face. So I have a way to fix that. Uh, I'll I might just redraw. It's because of the, the way I did it. Um, the way I rotated these. So I could just I could just smooth these out. It's fine. This one's a little bit strange because it doesn't line up the right way like it should. Just that one looks like. 
I like that nice sharp edge on that side. edge stand out a little bit more on the top and bottom to give it that little bit of sharpness. texture. It's a little bit funky in some spots. I think what I'm going to do is, since you see a lot of streaking across this side, I'm going to take this texture and rotate it. And just use this copy just to get the texture that I want. Texture position. Rotate it 90 degrees. Do another 90. Let's see what happens if I apply this texture into here now. That looks good for this side. So I'll draw a line and seal this up. take this and reposition it over the top of it. Just do an experiment here, see what this looks like. I do like that. And then apply that texture down. Yeah, I like that. Sweet. Perfect. Okay, so now let's cut out this notch here. So to do that, I'm gonna create that close loop there. Triple click, delete that line, move this over. And I'm gonna use the push-pull tool to extrude this out. And then I need to cut it out, so I'm gonna Select all of this area, right click, say intersect faces with selection, 
Now I should be able to delete that match. Oops, I don't want that to happen. I'll have to close this loop here. Ooh, it's being testy with me. What I should do is I should go back and extend these lines down so I don't have that issue. So it'll cut it out more cleanly. There we go. Now these, these faces here, I'll smooth out these edges, but I can see they're tan, which is not, which that means that they're the inside normals, or yeah, not the outside normals. I want them to be the outside normals, so I'm going to right click, say reverse faces. Now I'll apply this texture to it. There we go, perfect. Now I'll move this object over to the middle of that object. Perfect. Overall, this hatchet is probably too thick. Some hatchets are thicker because they're heavier. But this style of hatchet is not, I don't think it's like a hammerhead hatchet, it's more of a thin cutting hatchet, so I'm just going to thin it up overall. Yeah, I like that. Triple click it, turn it into a group, and I'll turn, I'll just leave that. Okay, so. Two objects, two of the three objects are done. Great, great, great. Okay, save it. Now we'll start modeling this handle. Give it a default material. Do the old push pull. We're just gonna model half of it. So, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a little a little different technique than uh, I did on the other ones, but I'm gonna use an a pull and offset technique. Um, Yeah, well, there's a trick that might work. So now that I've got a little bit of thickness, I can use the push-pull tool, but I can hold on control and push a copy of it. And once I have that copy, I could select that face and then scale it. Scale it in smaller. to give it that roundness. That looks good. So far. I think, I think I like it actually. Delete these extra faces. So this is just gonna be half of it. I also want to line up these edges with the top edge. those are going to be connected to the metal part. Uh, and actually you won't see any of these. So we're going to get rid of anything you can't see. You can't see me. Okay.
that was a reference to a wrestler, John Cena. I'm not trying to steal him. He's a really good wrestler slash movie star. So, um, now, I, like I did with the middle part of this, um, I made a little bit of waviness so it's not so straight. I want to do the same thing with this one. So to do that, I'm going to have to start connecting these lines together, just like I did in the other one. Okay, so now that those are connected, I want to give this a little bit of a waviness so I can select some of these edges and then just scale them in a little bit. And scale these ones out a little bit. It's not so computerized. It's straight. Okay, now I want to smooth out all these lines. So use the eraser tool, hold down control, turn off hidden geometry, start smoothing this all out. Okay, so half of our handle is made. So let's save it.
I, I do want to make these not so straight. So to do that, I'm going to have to view hidden geometry. I'm going to pull in these lines. So leave the out the outside edge, that middle edge there, and just pull these, um, scale them in. same thing to this other side. Soften that just tab and just bump it up all the way to 180 and it will soften out all the edges. This one's a little bit funky. I'm gonna just correct that one line here. And then this should be pretty good. Do the same thing on the other side. smooth or soften edges okay then apply the, the original texture to it okay the handles done make it a group move it over thin up this top part to fit inside of the metal.
Okay, so make this into a component. And this component has all three parts in it. Turn on model axis. And then I'll scale it down to 0.1, and that should be the correct scale. So you're modeling it 10 times the size, so it's about a foot long. That's, it's like, you know, sandwich foot long. Um, center it there and then we're good shadow doesn't make a lot of sense here let's just do it like this <laughs> 